sermon, everybody raves on the, the truth that she preaches. And you don't want to miss a service. But I want to just tell you, I just want to give you this one nugget. To be a great leader, don't be divisive. Don't bring division. I value people. God bless you. Can't wait to see you soon. Bye-bye. Yeah. Okay, so on children, you are dismissed. You want to take a little baby spin if you want to go. Um, so with the raising of hands, I just want to ask um, if you have heard of the Ark of the Covenant. <laughs> you. If you've heard of the Ark of, of the Covenant and you know what it is, raise your hand. Okay, awesome. I just wanted to see how much in depth it, if I needed to explain, but I'm just going to give a few scriptures of what it was and what the reason it was created for, what God intended it for. Um, it's found in Exodus 25. It goes, it's chapters and chapters of details of how to build the ark, what it looks like, how many inches, how many curtains. It's like really detailed of what the ark is. But I'm just going to give key scriptures of what the ark is. It's in Exodus 25. Here's Exodus 25, 8. It says, Then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. 20, verse 22 says, I will meet with you and give you all my commands for the Israelites. Verse 42, it says, For the generations to come, this burnt offering is to be made regularly at the entrance to the tent of meeting before the Lord. There I will meet you, I will meet you and speak to you. There also I will meet with the Israelites, and the place will be consecrated by my glory. So I will consecrate the tent of meeting and the altar and will consecrate Aaron and his sons to serve me as priests. Then I will dwell among the Israelites and be their God. They will know that I am the Lord their God who brought them out of Egypt so that I might dwell among them. So it's here it's clearly telling us that God wanted to dwell with his people. And so he told them, build me a sanctuary. Build me a sanctuary that I can be with you guys, so I can speak to you guys, so I can tell you what the people need to hear. Um, why, what does it have to do with us today? This is, this is my message today. It's 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, and it says, Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit? Who is in you? Whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You were bought at a price. Therefore, honor God with your bodies. Amen. So now he's telling us in the Old Testament, they had an ark of the covenant where God's presence dwelt. Now he's telling us we are the temples. We are the sanctuaries. In the, in the Old Testament, he clearly states over and over again, uh, consecrate it. Keep it holy. To be holy means to be separated from sin. So um, this is what he, this is, he had told Moses to build the ark. And what was so different about Moses than all the rest of the people? Why couldn't anybody just do it? The difference between Moses and all the, the Israelites was that Moses would separate himself and he would go spend time with God. He climbed the mountain and he would spend time with God. You didn't hear about no other people climbing up a mountain, taking time out of their normal life to go spend time with God. And guess what? They didn't, and God didn't speak to them like he spoke to Moses. It was because of Moses' heart and his, he went seeking after God. He went climbing the mountain that he needed to climb to get in God's presence, just him and God by himself. And that's why God spoke to him and used him mightily. But how did he get there? Okay, because Moses didn't get there overnight. It was a process. We all know, the, know Moses as a great deliverer, um, but, but this is the process that he, God had put him in. Number one, God had called him. If you know his story, he was um, with the burning bush. God called him. And in that moment, he demonstrates how human he is, and he says, I am not qualified. I can't speak right. Send somebody else. And um, God still called him, right? Um, Number two is 
There was a need for a deliverer in the time that was, that was, they were enslaved. His people, God's people were enslaved, right? And number three was when Moses believed it, Moses believed that he could do it, is when he did it. When he couldn't believe it, he, he doubted, he was scared. If he would have stayed in that mindset, he, none of those people would have been set free. But it was when he decided, like, okay, God, let's do this. You're going to use me, and I'm going to do this. Even though I'm not qualified, you are more than enough. Amen? Amen. Um, so in this process, all of us here go through the same process. We may be at different levels, but we're all in the same process. If you have not had your, your um, burning bush experience yet, then tonight is that experience. Tonight is a night where God is calling you and saying, I want to use you to deliver a people that is in slavery, that is stuck in bondage. Yeah. So tonight, you can hear God's calling if you haven't already. Because you, the reason you're here is probably because you already have a calling of God. Something is drawing you in. It's not something. It's God. And it's for such a time as this. Because God needs each and every one of us to rise up and be the army. We can't be, I can't be the full body by myself. We need every piece of the body. So you're here for a reason. You're watching for a reason. Okay. So, so the Bible says in Isaiah 59 two, sin separates us from God. Why? Because sin is a choice that we make. Um, we see that demonstrated with Eve. Um, he didn't force them not to eat of the tree. He didn't force them. He gave them a choice. And they chose to sin. And they were kicked out of the Garden of Eden. Um, so thank God for Jesus. Jesus' grace that makes a way today. So 1 Corinthians 10, 14 says, No temptation has overtaken you except what is common to mankind. And God is faithful. He will not let you be tempted beyond what you can bear. But you, but when you are tempted, he will also provide a way out so that you can endure it. Did you hear what I said? Stop saying you can't stop sinning. Because that would say that God is a liar. Because God just said right here in this verse, I will make a way out of every temptation you have. Yeah. You can, it's a choice to sin or not to sin. Stop believing the lie that you are addicted and find your way out. Yeah. Can I give you a little puzzle piece to this right now? Jesus is the way. He is the truth and he is the light. When you connect with Jesus, yeah, there's no way I can get out of this stop sinning. There's no way I can break free from this temptation. There's no way I can break out of this addiction. Guess what? Jesus is the way. The only way and the truth and the light. The truth will set you free. Stop believing the lies of the enemy. Step into truth and you're going to see that addiction, that um, temptation has no hold on you because we are called to be holy so we can house the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. Joshua 1 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that it is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Who doesn't want to succeed in life? Who doesn't want to be prosperous in life? There's the answer right there. You meditate on his word day and night. It doesn't say just hear his word on Sundays. Just just listen to a song every once in a while. You guys, day and night. You know what changed my life from living an ordinary life to living my whole life if based upon God's um, perspective is I don't go one thought without including God in my thought life, in my thought process. Before, I would hear about God, I would read a little bit about God, and then I would go and either work or spend time with the kids, or I wouldn't connect the two. 
right? Now I have a, a, a renewed mind, and this is how I do it personally. It might look different for everyone, but um, I literally have a conversation with God in every conversation I have. I have a conversation with you. I will, after God, what, are you, what, is, what is your perspective in this situation? God, what are you doing with me? God, what do you want this person to see? God, is there anything that you want to say to this person or in this moment want me to learn? While I'm having an interaction with any person, right? When that person leaves, I'm thinking, okay, God, I didn't like the way that conversation went. I let it go. I'm not going to hold on to it. I'm not going to let it keep adding and adding and adding. I take God with me all day long. That's how you meditate on his word day and night. You read the scripture, memorize the scripture. You're, you're thinking of scriptures in every situation. Oh, it is to my glory to overlook this offense. Perfect love cast out all fear. I'm not going to have anxiety about this situation. You take the scripture with you all day long. Once you stop um, taking the scripture with you, you're now on your own. You're, you now you're on your own. Now you're thinking your own thoughts. Now you're you're doing things on your own. You need to take scripture. You need to take the word of God. You need to take the presence of God everywhere you go. The reason why it was so important, um, the Ark of the Covenant was so important. Anywhere the Ark went, that's where God's blessings went. That's where God's favor went. That's where God's word went. If the people were not around the Ark, they weren't around his presence. They had to fight their own battles. We need to, we are the Ark today. We need to carry his presence and his anointing everywhere we go, amen? Amen. So we need to stay alert to not be conformed by the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. Every single thought, I'm checking it. I'm checking every single thought. Is this of God? Is this not? And if it doesn't bring glory to God, it's not for me, and I let it go. I do not dwell on it. Um, well, we have to start walking like we're there and we will be there. Because right? you're like, how am I going to get to, how do I get to be a deliverer when I'm over here in bondage? When I over here have my own insecurities? How am I going to, Moses started off over here, how did he get from there to there? He started by walking it out, by doing the first steps. Right? Um, I, tell, I tell the kids all the time, in order to be great, you have to be great. In order to be great, you have to be great. That means you start making great decisions, even in your little tiny decisions. Um, it's, it's a little decision. Am I going to do this or that? Yeah, it's not a huge decision that you're going to make, but all these great little decisions that you're making in your everyday life is going to add up, and you're going to have a good day because you made great decisions all day. After your one great day, then you have a second great day because of your little great decisions. Then here comes a great week, then a great month, then a great year, and you're on fire, right? Yeah. It starts with the first day. It starts with the first decision and the first step. Hebrews 12, 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles us. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. Oh my gosh, there's so much in that scripture that we could take from that scripture. But if you're running a race and you have weight, I did it with my kids. I put weights on their, on their ankles and I told them, run. And it, it slowed them down. It was harder. They were, it, they run out of energy and out of breath easier. When I took off the weights, they ran faster and they were free to run. They ran longer, right? What are weights in our life? One huge weight that disguises itself, that is kind of hard to tell, is the weight of disappointment. I noticed I was trying to meditate on God's word and I was, I was, walk, I was walking in the ways of God and still at the end of the day, I felt so down and I'm like, I did everything I could do, and um, I noticed it was, oh, this didn't work out today. Oh, my car declined. Oh, this person was mean to me, or, or my kid was going crazy today. Everything went wrong that day, and I was burdened, and I, was, I, was, I, I didn't have the joy of the Lord. And 
I have to realize that after every disappointment that I get in my everyday life, I have to let that weight go. I have to, I can't carry that weight with me every single day. So when I wake up, there's going to be disappointments every day. When you have disappointments, you need to throw them off and God's grace, God's love, God's mercy. Okay, that didn't work out, but God, you're going to make a way. Okay, God, my hope is in you. My trust is in you. Yeah, I, I don't, that went wrong, but I, we got this, right? If you're not doing that every day, those weights add up and it's a hard week. And then you can't do it anymore. And then you're so, you can't, you don't have the joy of the Lord to set you free. That's not how we should be living. We should not be living in slavery to anything. Because who the Son sets free is free indeed. That means I'm free to my core. That means whether I get a yes or a no, I'm still living in freedom. I'm still living in prosperity. I'm still living with my cup overflowing even when you tell me no. I'm still succeeding, amen? That's how our mindset needs to be. Okay, that didn't work out. It's not going to get me down. And my heart is still set on you're going to make a way where there is no way, even that, even though that door just closed. Because men are not our door openers. It's God. Amen. So that's a key to look throughout this next week. Or um, look, you gotta, you gotta be alert. You gotta pay attention to the little things that are weighing you down. You gotta be your little decisions. All of those you need to pay attention to because if you don't pay attention to those things, those things will weigh you down. Um, so we don't look to the right or to the left, you guys. His kingdom is our is our only business as Christians. That's why we're here. We're here to be Christ followers in our everyday life. That's our only business. Yeah, you might be working for another business or running your own business, but we have to remember our ultimate business is God's kingdom. We can't forget, we can't lose sight of that. We're not here to work. We're not here to live ordinary lives. We're not here for that. We're here to bring his kingdom down to earth. And that might look like working a normal job, but bringing his kingdom into that place, right? Amen. So we are carriers of his kingdom. Let's act like it. We are the sanctuary now. We have to be holy. And you don't, please hear me and understand this. You don't have to strive to be perfect. The Bible doesn't say be perfect as I am perfect. He said be holy as I am holy. Mm -hmm. And thank God that his grace is sufficient for us even when, when we can't do it. That's why Jesus died on the cross for us because he knew we couldn't do it on our own. But hear me, when you can't do it on your own, that's when you connect with Jesus and he'll take you to where you can't go. But you need to, you need to go to him in those moments. Like he said, I will always give you a way out. You need to find the way. Sometimes it's hard to find the way, but find it because your life and the lives of those that are in slavery, the lives of those that are in captives right now, they depend on you finding your way out of temptation. They depend on you being holy, you carrying the presence of God, you carrying the kingdom of God everywhere you go. So, before we are starting the new church, the Citadel, we're building the church. And before we can build this whole church, I believe that this is a time that God is building each and every one of us individually. He's building us. He's sanctifying us. He's separating us. He's purifying us, you guys. So our focus right now, I know my focus is, Okay, I'm going to focus on being a sanctuary for the Lord, of housing his glory, of housing his presence. It's, it, he says to be holy, you be holy. What, I don't, that's going to look different to every person. Every person's um, walk is different. Their struggles are different. But whatever it is that you have to let go, whatever is making you unholy, let it go. And watch, and watch God dwell amongst you because of it. Um, so it starts today, even as, as we talked about how, um, having an encounter, having, a um, a burning bush encounter, 
whether you've had it already or not, um, I just want to give time and space for that encounter if you're there. If you're past the encounter, if you already have the encounter, if you already heard God calling, and now it's time to, okay, God, I know you called me. Okay, now open your eyes to what happens if you, if you choose not to answer the calling. Or what happens if you do choose? There's a whole nation waiting for deliverance. Now we carry that freedom. We carry that salvation that many don't get to see often because they're living in this world where this world is so corrupt and that's all they see. We need to show them a different light, amen? We are the light. So um, I'm just gonna have everyone, if you can just go ahead and close your eyes. If you're here tonight and you've never had an encounter with God, you have never felt the calling of God, um, this would be your first step. Your first step is you're here and this is him calling you. So at this moment, if um, you would like to step into being part of being a sanctuary for God to hold his presence, I'm gonna ask you can raise your hand and if you've never prayed um, that prayer for him to come into your heart, if you can raise your hand and we can get, get started on that path. Okay. And if you're, if you have or are feeling the call of God on your life and you're wanting to respond, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand. Amen. If you see a need for your loved ones, your friends, your family, the city, if you have a burden for the lost, I'm gonna ask you to raise your hand. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and pray that, um, pray over everyone who raised their hand. If you raise your hand for any of those things, I'm gonna ask you to stand. Oh Lord Jesus, we just invite you into our lives, into our hearts, Father. I pray that even right now, Lord Jesus, that, that you would uh, make us holy as you are holy, like only you can, because we cannot do it on our own, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray that for every person that has filled your calling, oh Lord Jesus, that you would not relent until they give you their attention, Lord Jesus. I pray for, for each and every person that that your calling would, would even magnify in their lives till that's all they think about, that's all that matters, Father, that that's the, the most important thing in their lives is what you are calling them to do, Father. I pray that you would continue to stir it up within them. And for those that said yes, Lord Jesus, to your calling, those even, even if it was with hesitation like Moses, Lord, those who have said yes to the calling, oh, Lord Jesus, I pray for an anointing upon them like never before, Lord Jesus, for an anointing to be able to destroy the yoke of whatever the enemy is trying to weigh them down with, Father. Lord Jesus, I pray... Father, that they would just walk in a new anointing. And Lord Jesus, as we come together as a congregation, as a people, as a body um, of Christ, seeing that there needs to be deliverance in this world, Father, that so many are captive, so many are in slavery, so many are in bondage, even our own families, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father God, that not only will you give us eyes to see that, but Father, that we carry the anointing to break through, Father, those, those bondages and those strongholds, those generational curses, Father. I pray that we would become a people, of, even as Moses was, Lord Jesus, that we would set the captives free following your leading, Lord Jesus. I pray that everywhere we go, Lord Jesus, that each and every person that is here, they would, they would be holders of the truth. They would be light, Father God, that any room they enter, Lord Jesus, they would have a mind of Christ, Lord Jesus, and they would bring your kingdom into every place that they go, Father. And Lord Jesus, um, even as it took Moses a little while to believe that he was the one 
Father, I pray, Lord Jesus, that you would confirm in their hearts that you need them for such a time as this, Father, that they are the ones that's going to change their family, that's going to change their neighborhood, that's going to change the city, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, that you would give us a boldness and a confidence like never before, Father, that we would be like wild fire that anyone who was around us lord jesus that they would that they would believe in themselves lord jesus because they see what happens when we put our trust in you father and that they would also put their trust in you lord jesus so i just thank you for this moment even that what you're doing right here right now father i thank you that this is just the beginning father i pray that even as they go about their week that you would remind them holy spirit to pay attention to those things that are weighing them down that they would pay attention and they would not allow disappointment to lay them down father but they would be set free and free indeed in every area lord i pray that we would live as you have called us to live i pray that even as we're sanctuary a sanctuary for you even as you are making us holy as you are holy lord jesus i pray that you would keep us from sin that you would open our eyes to the way out from temptation that no longer will we give in to temptation no longer father but we would draw the line in the sand and we would say no more and father i just thank you that as we come into obedience with your word that the nation would be set free because of it lord that you would be able to use each and every person here lord and i just pray for bondages and and um strongholds to be broken right now in the name of jesus father I thank you, Lord, that you said it's not by power nor by might, but it's by my spirit. So, Holy Spirit, we just invite you in at this time, Father, to minister to each and every person. There's no words that man can say that can break some bondages, but just one touch with your Holy Spirit, Father, can set them free to the core. So, Holy Spirit, come minister to what, what the word that I couldn't say, minister to each heart. Set them free, Lord. Let them see the light. I pray over each and every person right now that the blindfold would fall off, that the deception of the, of the enemy would be broken now in the name of Jesus. Be set free right now in the name of Jesus into a freedom that you have never experienced, of a joy that you have never experienced. Oh, Lord Jesus, I pray that you would bring laughter into each and every one of their homes, that you would bring their cup would overflow, Father, that no longer will we live in barely surviving or barely getting by. Oh, but Father, I thank you that your truth sets us free, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Father, that even now, that no longer will we be tied down to those things that are weighing us down or burdening us. But Father, I just thank you for what you are doing in each and every person, that we will never be the same, that we would continue to walk the path that you have, we have started, Lord. And I just thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. I just, we're just going to keep this um, same spirit. If you want to have a, a moment with God and just lay it all down, if you want to have a time for you to tell God, this is my decision. I decide today to answer your call. You need to make that decision. You need that moment. You need to have that conversation with the Lord. Because once you do, guess what? You now just entered a new level. You now just entered a new realm. And God hears you and sees your faith. So I'm going to ask you to put some action behind your faith today. Because faith without works is dead. You could sit here and raise your hand and say, I heard God's call. You could sit here and raise your hand and say, that's me. But if you don't do nothing about it, you'll stay in that place. You need to do something about it. 